Rewind. Hello and welcome to Remake Rewind, uh, where we talk about the originals and the remake and we compare them, stuff like that. I don't normally do this, Mike. I think you normally do the introductions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? You put your spin on it. It's it's not as good as the way I do it. <laughs> But you, you gotta, know, you gotta be brave. <laughs> you gotta be brave. Who's that? So, who's who's that talking that, there? That's Joe. So, first off, Alex, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, um, you're one of your hosts, Alex Ortega. With me is Mike and David Delgado. What up? What up? Thanks for the introduction, Alex. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, and uh, thank you for introducing me, Alex. Uh, <laughs> this is my name is Joe. <laughs> Joe, Dr. saving the best for last. Joe. <laughs> yeah. Doctor Baby JJ. Yeah, AKA. Doctor. A uh, lot of lot of aliases. Doctor da- Baby JJ. Um, Doctor Dickbutt. <laughs> uh, my my lesser known one, yeah. <laughs> but um, I didn't so... I didn't go to Doctor Dickbutt school for, for seven years for nothing. <laughs> right. Exactly. You got to respect the title. So what we're doing on this episode is we are now celebrating the, the two-year anniversary of Remake Rewind. So we are now going into our third year. And what we decided to do uh, to kind of celebrate the anniversary is uh, Double D came into the podcast about six, seven months in. Alex came in at about a year and a half or so. So what we decided to do is because they missed so many episodes, both Double D and Alex picked an episode that they weren't on for us to revisit, redo, with guest host so for the first anniversary special we did just uh two weeks back double d picked dread and judge, judge dread. dread and we had neil <laughs> if you haven't listened to it go listen get to, to it. the podcast as a guest host and for this episode alex what did you you pick i picked the fly and the fly <laughs> and we got special guest joe medina aka dr baby jj aka dr dick butt who fans of the show may remember from our robocop episode He's been on the podcast before. He's a great friend of the show and uh, just great friend in general. Yeah, I actually would have preferred to do uh, to do that one only because uh, I got a better mic this time. Yeah, no, you can't do the same episode twice. No, you can't. That's the whole. <laughs> are those point. are those the rules? Is that the yeah? So <laughs> those are the our rules. rules. <laughs> was for the anniversary is they each picked an episode that they weren't in to recover. So. You know, unfortunately, Double D was in the RoboCop episode with you. I was a guest. I don't, I don't you. remember that. You don't remember? That? I don't yeah. Remember yeah. That. yeah, yeah. You guys were no, both I'm in that. Sure I love just, RoboCop. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was just me, you, and Dustin. <laughs> nope, nope. Double D was definitely <laughs> We brought him in because he's like. Over I don't know, man. I listened to it. <laughs> no, no, I, I am forgettable. Nah, Actually, just... Double D didn't talk that much in it, I but didn't. we're not going back <laughs> and did. talking about that one. Well, we're talking you know, about we're gonna change it. Oh. All right, so <laughs> Alex, why do you, well, I'm going to let you get to write this ship? I'm going to let you steer steer the ship. The the all right. the, the, the all the stuff is yours. The reins are yours. <laughs> Fucking lead this all ship. All right, bro. let me just grab these reins really quick, Mike. All right, uh, so we're going to be talking about the 1958 The Fly, and we're going to be comparing it to David Cronenberg's Fly. So, who got my synopsis for this one? I I've got one. <laughs> Or I had one. Where'd it go? Oh, oh man, I feel like you. Oh, man. All right, so <laughs> I, guess it, I got one. Anymore. So this is written by Craig Clark. This is the original version of a scientist experimenting with matter transference, accidentally exchanging one arm and his head with that of a fly, which was in the transferred chamber. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think that might um, be a bit uh, too simplified. Very simple. Uh, it got to the point. I, I like it. <laughs> Yeah, no. they, didn't, they didn't really bring yeah. up the womanizing. In the... <laughs> yeah, that's, well, there's not much womanizing <laughs> they, they, in the first one. I don't, I don't know. No, there's a the little... great scene where the kid is like, "Oh, you know how women are." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was or just like yeah, when the cool. nurse, the nurse, like subtle, like I'm, they, I'm glad they wrote it. It's like they tell me nothing. <laughs> she like because she was asking her like, um, "Do you know what they're saying about me?" She's like, "They tell me nothing." <laughs> right, the nurse to to uh, H- Helene, the wife. That's right. <laughs> So let's let's first start it off in the beginning. It, it it doesn't like it starts out like a mystery, which I kind of like because it shows like this lady and she's like running away from a hydraulic press where the guy's like, hey, who, who the fuck's over there? He takes a look and then you just see like a fucking corpse of bright red a ton blood. Of blood. Yeah, bright red, just paint bright red blood, which is <laughs> a lot for a 1958 movie. I've... I've seen this once before, and I forgot like how much blood there was in that opening scene. The one thing that I, I do remember about the opening scene, in the very first seconds, you have a cat yowling. 
Nope. Oh yeah, and yeah. like that. That <laughs> was so like titles. every. This is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was like every um every like cliche horror. Like you know you're gonna watch a good horror movie when you got a cat yelling at <laughs> second one. <laughs> it's really baseline, you know. Yeah. Pet cemetery. <laughs> oh, the the nice the nice bell in the background. I, I didn't count how many times. Sure, it was late. <laughs> it had to have been like nine at least. At least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, my favorite part of that scene, though, is that he sees the girl, and then she like takes off, and in the next scene, she's at home calling. I'm like, did did she fucking run that fast back home, or did the I'm guy sure just like a, had a car? Hour. Yeah, but they explained it's 1958, it. and they're rich. <laughs> it's it just the transition was so quick; it threw me off. And then they're like, "Oh, she actually just lives right there." <laughs> he like points. This movie <laughs> was only like an hour and thirty six minutes, or something like that. Like it, the pacing was quick; like it just flew by. It was good though; it was good pacing. No, it was, yeah. it was, it's a good movie. It surprised me. So when I was younger. And this is one of the things that I appreciate about the podcast is there are a lot of movies that I've watched that I would have never watched if it wasn't for the podcast. And this is one I that I would have never watched before. I was never really into like black and white movies. I was never really into like the 1950s, like sci-fi kind of like. Wait, was, was yours in black and white? Oh, no, this one's not black and white. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, mine uh, black and white. Just in general. I'm not saying this particular movie. I'm just saying in general, like. Movies like this are not movies that I would have ever watched before. So, like, an, another example, this came out only, like, a year or two after The Thing from Another World, which is what hey. The Thing is based off of. Yeah. Like, I would have never watched that movie. I would have never watched this movie. So, seeing that movies from, like, the 50s, 60s, 40s, you know, we've covered movies all the way back to the 30s on this podcast, are actually good. And I would have never done this back in the day. So, you know, that's one thing I do appreciate about this podcast, being able to go and watch movies I wouldn't have before. Yeah, I mean they're they're definitely good originals, and you can see why they were remade. But like these effects, man, were actually pretty good for the time. Yeah, I think. they hold. I, I I don't even think they're good for the time being. They still hold up pretty well. I think the the worst thing it was the giant spider for me. Yeah, the giant spider. <laughs> the I love the giant. No, spider. how is the that head the... and arm on the fly? The one thing I didn't really understand. I mean, I, I guess at that point would be you know like. How much of the fly was the man and the man the fly? <laughs> right. <laughs> I just, I don't. Because he could like, talk he, at the well, end. Yeah, did, the he, fly. did he, did he help like, me. split his consciousness? Or, like, I don't. Yeah, yeah like, how me. did the fly understand English? Like, how was it saying, help me? <laughs> right. Well, help that's so, I think at that Dude, point it was the man. Like, they com- they switched conscious- no, consciousness, I guess. You know what I think? I think it's actually, like, flies think in English. <laughs> Uh, I believe that. I mean, that's, the, that's the only way this makes sense. Or, or if we're gonna if we're gonna really unpack this, it's probably because he's heard English his whole life. He's a fly. We don't know how they. Learn. <laughs> well, hey, they never actually answered this like perfectly. How long do flies live? They said oh, they said like a few said about a month or two. Or I think I think like David that, Price yeah. David Price said um, a month. Vincent Price. David Price. Oh, David, David Price. Price. Sorry, sorry, he just sorry, like sorry. shrugged it's it Price's off. Price's brother. It wasn't, it wasn't a real. Yeah, it well, like well David did. Price is his cousin. <laughs> his cousin. <laughs> yeah. No, Vin, yeah, Vincent Price. Uh, 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 a month or two. Francois. Yeah. Oh my. I just didn't understand how him and Andre were brothers. <laughs> what do you mean? Is that Brannigan? You mean? Yeah, like they just sounded completely different. Did one like grow up? Yeah, what? privileged, and the other one grew up like like a, like an American hothead. Like I don't know. Like they both grew up in Canada, though. Canada. Yeah, they both they both they both grew up in Canada, but like he had such a like well, one had like an accent, and the other one just yeah. just such a, like an American bravios. I guess I don't I don't know. I didn't. So which didn't, one had really the American did. bravios in your opinion? Um, it was Andre. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. So maybe it's because Vincent Price's character Francois, like worked his ass off to like support his younger brother and sent his younger brother to like engineering school in America maybe America fuck yeah, yeah well... <laughs> MIT is a motherfucking school yeah oh, god <laughs> I really liked Andre though he he really reminded me of Zap Brannigan from Futurama I, his I voice don't was see that spot on. I, I mean the the voice no, sounded exactly I disagree like Zap Brannigan I so I'm pretty sure I heard I heard that too. I don't yes, know. I haven't you, watched Futurama in a long time, so maybe I'll have to give Futurama another go. Just get some some audio bites. 
But so one of the things that I thought was crazy about this movie in terms of pacing is so she calls Francois, played by Vincent Price, who did did a lot of these like sci-fi horror monster flicks back in the day. She calls him. He calls the police inspector who's at like a chess club or some shit like that playing chess. At midnight, right? Like, it was like midnight. Yeah, yeah, it was late. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry for disturbing you. Can you like go meet me here? So like not only is he able to, she's able to get home. So Joe brought this up earlier. He's like, I don't understand. Or maybe it was Alex. Like, I don't understand how the transition, how she like got out of there so quick. So they end up saying she leaves. She gets to the house, calls Francois. Francois calls the chief inspector. <laughs> the chief inspector and Francois get to this factory where you know the, Wait, the actually, guy was killed. Actually, Francois also gets a call from the from the worker, and then he calls the chief right. inspector. Yeah, he also gets a call from like a worker. So he gets a call. But the from chief inspector the, picks up Francois the, on the way there. The night yeah. watchman. Right. So <laughs> yeah, then I wrote that get down to the the crime scene, <laughs> and like there's like a doctor, and he's like. This man's been dead for thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he, like he just didn't even look at him real quick. Like, and he's like, how would he tell that? He's smushed, dude. Like, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like the rest of his body. I, I yeah. think he like grabbed his wrist too because he was just he like just kneeled and he's like, yeah, he's been dead for thirty minutes. I'm like, what? Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, and then they talk about how the um the the pressure plates were pushed to like the extreme, which is like zero, which means the plates literally go up each other, against each other, which was flattened steel. And there's no way that the woman could have done it because she didn't know how to use it. Well, how, like, how, oh, okay. how could she, Mike? How could she? <laughs> how could she? How could she? <laughs> right. Um, and the so stroke like, oh, count okay, was you know. two. So, you know, immediately you're supposed to, like, uh, I don't remember who said it, but someone was like, oh, it starts like a mystery. And, oh, you know, you kind of think that it is. And then it quickly is like, she, they go and visit her, and she's like, "No, I totally killed that guy." <laughs> <laughs> Mystery oh, solved. Yep. No, nope, that was me. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm not a murderer. I did it, but I killed him. I can't tell you I, why, I, but I did it. I, I feel like like it, it just would have been good enough, and now society was like, "Yeah, I killed him," and and, did, and they're like, "Why?" And she's like, "Oh, well, I don't remember." All right, let's fucking book her. <laughs> uh, take her to the jail. That's that's it. Case closed. Case, case closed. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing for why she killed him, which makes sense. I totally get it. But the thing that drove me crazy is the whole plot of the movie hinges on, you know, she's pretending to be crazy. And then over the course of the movie, Vincent Price's character is kind of like, come on, you got to fucking tell me what's going on because, like, I'm going to have to watch your goddamn kid. Who I love. He's my nephew, but he's not my kid. And also, I've wanted to bang you for like 20 years, but you banged my brother. <laughs> and now I've got to raise my brother's kid and you. Tell me what's going on. And she's like, fine. He And then like the movie goes basically, this all happens in the first like 20 minutes of the movie. And then the rest of the movie's flashback, and she's telling the story of what happened, right? Yeah, but the most important part, uh, part about that is the flashback effect. Right. <laughs> So basically, the whole thing is she gives does the flashback, and we'll go through the plot, I'm sure. I'm sure Alex wants to go through the plot. But she basically, the whole thing hinges on, he get the, you know, the guy, Andre, has an experiment and turns into like a human-fly hybrid. And for whatever reason, it would be unacceptable for their son, Philippe, to know about this. So it's better for the son I mean, if, to if lose I knew my dad turned into a fly, that, that, that would fuck me up as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to think, though. This kid has caught the same fly like three times. <laughs> would he not notice his father's head on this fly? Well, that's also, I, I was waiting for that reveal. I so wanted to see a fly with a head, <laughs> a human head on it. I'm like, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. I kind of was sad that I got like, uh, upper torso man <laughs> help me, me. <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing like in like the worst part about it it, it was so slow and they're they're, <laughs> they're watching so they're watching this obvious human man fly <laughs> and like getting eaten in slow motion and they you couldn't just like they, they pick off the spider they could have like... flicked the spider well i guess they mu they must be afraid of spiders <laughs> i wouldn't i would have to be fair it was a was humongous huge. spider i would flick yeah. that yeah. Yeah. yeah i guess he you're just right. grabs a rock and <laughs> murders <laughs> them both yeah oh god it had to be done <laughs> it had to be done <laughs> <laughs> no one's gonna believe me. I'll never forget the screams. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. 
if if if, if she's a murderer, so are you. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, like that's the total get out of jail card for her. It's like, well, you can't charge her with murder because you that's did right. the same you committed thing. suicide. What's that's the difference? Viable. A man fly or a fly man? <laughs> and a spider. <laughs> so ultimately, the whole plot hinges on this woman thinking that it would be wrong for the society to know that her husband turned into a mutant fly man. So she would rather pretend to be crazy in hopes that maybe she'll just go to a mental institution or be kept on bed rest. So she thinks it's better for her son to think her mom is crazy and killed her dad for no reason other than she's crazy <laughs> than just saying, hey, your dad had an experiment in the lab. Mike, think of, it, well, think, think of it this way. The kid's going to go to school and everyone's going to call him, hey, fly boy, we remember your they dad. They don't have to know. They could just say there <laughs> yeah, was an experiment from, uh, that went life. bad and he died like in an explosion or something. If well, they're lying anyway, make up, the, make up a lie that makes sense. They don't have to say he got mutated. Nobody has to see the body. Nah, I think you got that all wrong. No <laughs> it's like the end of the Dark Knight, where it's like, I I could have killed Harvey Dent and those two cops. Well, well, why don't we just say the Joker did it? No, it just makes more sense to say that I did it, even though you know the Joker's been killing people in the city for you know weeks. Well, this is like, fly. It it's sense. not. It's not called the Fly Man or Bat. It's, it's you know it's, it's different. Like, well, well obviously, my point is not the hero make of the up city. a lie, make up one that makes more sense. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's a traumatizing situation they did not think through but they did plan the whole thing out it was premeditated <laughs> i mean she did she did seem pretty crazy like i don't th like she just started slapping flies around <laughs> getting all crazy <laughs> like i don't know why well, she was she... still trying to find the white headed they fly. had to destroy it man <laughs> that, <laughs> they had to destroy it <laughs> So yeah, it's like the end of Terminator Two. It's just still one more left. Yeah, you gotta you gotta put it in uh, the whatever the molten metal is. <laughs> one last thumbs up. Uh, I don't know, Mike. It's just a plan they came up with on <coughs> the fly. Ha! <laughs> no. Dumb. God damn it! Thank you. I hate it. I love you. <laughs> I just don't understand how that is better than the truth or some variation of the truth. I don't know, man. <laughs> um, a lot of things in this movie didn't make sense. Yeah. There, I, mean, I mean, there was a the thing what? that doesn't make sense. What? Why is it only his head and arm that got transmitted? And like, per Why? and like, what? and like, really perfectly. Did, so that fly and had also, like, yeah, five oh, other legs and and just one human arm. <laughs> one human arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what? <laughs> how how is the cat still meowing? Uh, I that love that. That's the thing that the most. <laughs> yeah, the dude, I love that. <laughs> I, I was expecting I the cat to be like in the wall or something, and it's still meowing. Yeah. But it's no, dude, it's just like meow. Gone. Cat that, particles. Dude, <laughs> that that cat thing that is... drives me crazy is this guy's a scientist. <laughs> they talk about how he's had these like crazy discoveries before. We don't know what any of his other you know successful experiments are but he just like does a plate and the printing that says made in japan comes out mirrored Flipped, and so yeah. the first thing he does when he tests it on a live creature is does it on the family pet who presumably <laughs> his family loves who we've seen the son play with yeah. lovingly already he is and he experiments on a cat versus he's rich you can just buy ballet tickets the day of why would you not just go like, get a mouse or yeah, something? Yeah, get some mice. Or just, uh, that's all I was thinking. I was like, damn, this this fool is like crazy. He just looked at that right. that cat. He, just, and he was confident. And then that's, he put the plate of, uh... with the cat. I was like, isn't that going to blend them together? Like, isn't yeah, that just increasing more? Well, that's the thing variables? that I don't understand is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even it, in the new one, which we'll get to, because that plays more heavily into the new one. But why? Yeah. Why aren't they merged in the same thing? Like when he does the champagne, champagne yeah, with, with the, the bucket whole... of ice. And it comes out cold. Like, why is like the ice not fused together with the bucket and whatnot? But also, why would it be cold? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't I, make any sense. The only because uh, it's ice. That's because it's <laughs> ice. <laughs> this movie ice is only one risque. state. <laughs> cold. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. so this movie's also like really risque in that like when he realizes that he can actually do it, like he. As presumably experimented on that guinea pig before, but he he brings his wife down to show her the experiment the first time, and then it it gets messed up with the made in Japan is it you know mirrored letters. He like kicks her out and immediately goes back to work. So then like it's something like 
two weeks later or something like that, he calls her back down. And he's like, hey, I bought you tickets to the ballet. And we see, seriously, an entire ballet performance. <laughs> it's like a whole <laughs> dance number of us just watching some ballet people. But my well, I, f- or, I do have to. I, so I do. I do have to just point out the similarities between the two movies, uh, which both of these guys are like fucking crazy. <laughs> like they're oh, legit. Yeah. They're legit oh, yeah. mad scientists. You I, know I feel I mean? like, like, like nobody does it. like the whole cat thing. Like like he's a sociopath, <laughs> dude. He like feels <laughs> nothing. He like fucking tells his wife like. Well, even like, his <laughs> wife <laughs> though, because like he tells the wife, and the wife is like. Oh, honey. And then that Why was it. Why would you do that? <laughs> so, like, there... And he's like, it would be funny if life wasn't precious. <laughs> Cat particles. <laughs> Cat. Well, it's like, his whole thing is he, like, tells her, and it's really weird, so he has this, like, great night. He takes her to, you know, the ballet, and then he's like, oh, we're going to have some reintegrated champagne. And then he does, like, the guinea pig, and he's like, don't worry, I'm not going to make the mistake again. I already lost the cat. And she's like, what? <laughs> That's where the cat went? And he's like, oh, you know, don't even worry about it. Like, it's funny. It's like, you'll laugh about it someday. And it's like, that's pretty messed up. And she's like wanting to bang him. Like, she's like straight up like, he's like, we'll finish the night with champagne. And she's like, finish? And he's like, oh, you're not feeling very scientific. She's like, is that a bad thing? Like, she's trying to fuck and make oh, yeah. the leap a little brother. And he just wants to, you know, play in his lab. I mean, oh, if yeah. you saw Katrina two, what, two times a month, wouldn't that be what you want to do? Fuck or do the experiment? Both. Both. I would <laughs> probably want to fuck first. Exactly. Just like her. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but he doesn't want to. It's because he's a mad scientist. It's weird. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, what, what are other highlights for you guys? Wait. Oh, oh, one <laughs> one big thing. One big thing that I thought was very strange was I... So Vincent Price... Is at a dinner table with his young nephew, and Philippe with Philippe, which F- Philippe like is just like an American little boy too. Like I don't like I guess he gets it from his dad, but but Vincent Price is legit serving this kid what I presume is wine wine that's been watered water? down. <laughs> what is he trying to do with know. this Maybe nephew? It was just juice. <laughs> well, he's trying to Did get you... him sauce so he can like get the true fat at him. That's. <laughs> I don't know. I wish they would have. Well, I wish they would have established that. His, his his nephew is a little strange, and you kind of already mentioned it, where he's like women kind of thing. Because he's like, <laughs> he's yeah, always mommy's really island, strange. Dude. Like I haven't seen dad in weeks, and then you know, all of a sudden, like she tells, she gets mad at me for like finding this really cool fly, and then the next day she tells me to get rid of it, and then she tells me to find it again, and. It like there's like a flashback within a flashback where he's like, "Yeah, I found this fly with a white thing," and the mom's like, "Get rid of it." And he's like, "Oh man, that was the best fly I ever caught." <laughs> well, see, that's the thing I don't understand. I thought that he... this kid's probably a sociopath pulling off wings off of flies. Well, I thought I thought he had caught the fly the same day the the transformation he he, happened. He did. Yeah. He did. Okay, because okay. that same night, the night of the transformation, he doesn't eat any of his food. And so the maid's like, hey, the your husband, the crazy scientist dude, didn't eat any of his food. So she goes down there and he like slides a note and like, hey, don't freak out. Let me tell you what's going on. I so, need some milk and rum. Hey, yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah give, so. me some of that, give me some of that good milk and rum, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so he ends up getting like a, um, he like writes her a letter, explains what happened. And she's like, oh, fuck that fly we had it and he's like oh you bitch you dirty bitch you had the fly you're gonna get the you're gonna get the claw now girl (laughs) (laughs) he raises his pimp claw oh yeah he was about to give her that backhand claw that that big that big daddy claw Yeah, we just for the record, we don't we don't uh, advise hitting women on this podcast. Don't it's condone just, that's it. kind of okay. like he gets really upset because he's got the fly brain. It's kind of like donkey brains, but not, a little smaller. Not from men, but especially not from fly men or men flies. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But like, yeah, eventually, like this movie is just he's convinced that. He needs to find the fly and go back through the teleporter with the with same the fly. The same so, fly so it can be reversed. Yeah. Right. 
But then there's a point where she's like, what if you just go through the teleporter on your own? And he's like, fine. And he does it. And it obviously doesn't work. <laughs> That's when she and sees, then, yeah. yeah, his, his and that fly was, face. <laughs> that was the, yeah. that was the big Honestly, reveal. Honestly, it looks pretty rad. That was the big reveal at an hour, 13 minutes. Yeah. And this movie's only like an hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> so ultimately what ends up kind of happening is he finds out that the fly almost got caught again and it didn't. So he gets kind of pissed. And so he's, I don't remember exactly what he's doing, but he's like wrestling with his fly hand. It, well, because like he's, he's like, telling, he's like writing a note, like, okay, well, in that case, just destroy me. And the fly hand's like, no, no. that's right. <laughs> so he's like fighting with the Must fly live. hand. <laughs> and then there's a point where like the fly, so he's like, yeah, we just need to kill it. So when he's getting ready to kill himself under the press, the fly hand like pulls the wife under for a split second. Yeah. I don't even know how she got out I, of like the fly grip when remember. the press was going down. Yeah. But he ultimately just decides, yeah, he needs to kill himself because the fly brain is taking over. And the doc or the the detective guy, the uh, or the inspector, comes back and he's like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't believe a single word she's saying. I'm gonna, you know, arrest her." And then well, as he's, he's like, getting ready you're, to arrest you're, her, you're, you're welcome because you know she's not gonna be hanged. I I know she's insane from that fucking story. Right. So, <laughs> so hey, yeah. So <laughs> he. When he shows up to like arrest her, the the son and this kind of pissed me off this time around. I didn't remember this part, but this kid Philippe is told if you find this fly, find an adult immediately. So he, his mom's about to get arrested, and he's like playing with his toys or whatever. And then he tells his uncle like, "Hey, that fly, I found it this morning, and the fi and it's about to get killed by a spider." And he's like. <laughs> wait what it's real and he goes yeah so it's like this kid saw the spider in the morning <laughs> and waits to tell his family about it and basically gets his dad killed well obviously he never gave a shit <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just like help me help what 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 wait so did he have both consciousnesses I don't know if it's the fly taking on some hu human mannerisms. I really don't know. Well, well, yeah, Cause like, so... if it re was the dad, couldn't you just like save the dad and then like, hey, your dad's tiny now. <laughs> yeah, but it would only have a thirty day lifespan of the fly's life. I mean, he becomes so like a fly. Is... I mean, man, fly thing. I don't know. Maybe he lives longer man, now. Man, bear, pig, fly. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe like just as uh, um, he's Tinker Bell. Andre... <laughs> Andre, Andre, who became the Fly Man, you know he, you know maybe he only had a month or two to live. Versus the Man Fly gets a normal man life, so and he could have had, if he, he could have just been, yeah, like he could have still been a dad. I'm sure he could have like, I, I'm sure he could have wrote stuff with that. With, he could have wrote stuff down with his little hands. You'd have to learn little Fly Hand sign language stuff. Or just like give I'm, him a tiny little like Barbie doll pencil. Yeah, it would have worked. No, I mean, there's not a pencil that small. I could see now why they decided. You'd to have kill to get him himself with a dipped in ink. You know what? Yeah, yeah like Joe, Joe's right. They, fuck it. Just kill. They should. Just, yeah, just killed him. Yeah, <laughs> that, that no. was it. So the big thing at the end is Vincent Price loses his shit because the inspector sees a fly talking with like a human head. And he's just like, holy shit! <laughs> and just stumps the shit out of this thing. <laughs> and he's like, you can't arrest her now because she killed a fly man and you killed a man fly. <laughs> and it's basically the same thing. It's like, no, I think it's a little bit different. If I saw the same thing, I would just be like, what the fuck? And I would kill it too. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I think that's the moral of the movie. Murder is murder. <laughs> murder is murder. <laughs> no, I think they're both justified in that case. Yeah, justified murder is murder. <laughs> justified murder. Oh, God. <laughs> Th thanks, oh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, the, the ending, though, it's like, it's like they're just back to their regular happy lives, which I, I find disturbing. Yeah, dude. His <laughs> uncle is now his dad. <laughs> so I'm still going to take me to the zoo? <laughs> And he's like, yeah, let me bang your mom first, which is what I've been wanting to do for, like, 20 years. And then the mom was like... I'm going to make you a cousin, like, brother. Yeah. <laughs> this is the mom was like, you know, a ask your, your uncle about your dad. I'm like, that's a dick move. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, and then I he murdered him, your dad. The ultimate cock <laughs> block. He gives him what has to be the worst, like, way to explain that his dad was dead. Like, 
<laughs> your, your father was an explorer. <laughs> and at the end, the kid's like, I want to be an explorer too. I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> so you want to die with your wife. I mean, I guess this kid is a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> and then he hates women. It's true. Right. Oh, man. So is, is that it? Is that it for the first one? I- so there was one note I wrote down. I forgot to bring it up when we were talking about it. So it was Dandelo, if you remember that. <laughs> the, the cat's cat, name was yeah, Dandelo. Dandelo. And when when he when it reminded me of, uh, or the note I wrote down was Dandelo meows eternally. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a poet, Joe. Into the infinity. <laughs> yeah, just infinitely, like, I, and you know, to to everyone's <laughs> every time the wind blows. <laughs> Like that's like that's gonna freak someone out somewhere. Like I don't know, like I don't know how it works, but if you really think about it, like he doesn't have any of the organs to meow. Like he, like how is he moving? Like is he just like an ethereal spirit that meows? Maybe he was disintegrated. I I don't think I would huh. think twice though if I was, like I was walking down a street and I heard a meow. I was like, oh, there's a there's a fucking cat. Well, what if you heard it from above you? Yeah, like it was coming from above. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. I I would look up in the sky and be like, what the fuck? (laughs) Flying cat. (laughs) A flying cat. You can't keep doing this. It's just just (laughs) cat. All right. That that wasn't that wasn't as bad. (laughs) <laughs> I kind of I kind of like the other ones. I nah, did. That I, was a bit more of a stretch. I think that's why I liked it. All right, so I, I guess we'll talk about the the remake now. <laughs> yep, let's do it. Joe, right. you got a synopsis? Um, yeah, I do. Uh, I do have a synopsis right here. So, <clears throat> so I'm <clears throat> get it ready. War. All right. <clears throat> When scientist yeah. when scientist Seth well, Brundle completes his teleport teleportation device, he decides to test its abilities on himself, as well as two baboons, a steak, and I think what else did he use? <laughs> he, a, a, a stocking. A stock. Yeah, that was the first one. A stocking. Um, unbeknownst to him, a housefly slips in during the process with him, leading to a merger of a man and insect. And initially. Brundle appears to have undergone a successful teleporta- teleportation, but the fly's cells begin to take over his body as he becomes increasingly fly-like. Brundle's girlfriend, Gina Davis, is horrified, <laughs> horrified as the person she once loved deteriorates into a monster. And that's it. Yep. <laughs> Can I, I just want to say this movie was gross. I love this movie. Oh, it's super gross. It's <laughs> like the whole Cronenberg yeah, I mean, I think, gross. I think, I think it, it was, but I mean... David Cronenberg uh, uh, directed this, and uh, you know he's he's actually like well known for a lot of like really like physical effects. Yeah, body horror. Yeah, body yeah. horror, which was it was great. Yeah, this was great. Really won an Academy gross. Award for like makeup and prosthetics. Yeah, nineteen ni- eighty-seven. You know who? Um, you know who introduced their award was uh, Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was as, it was as bad as it sounds. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> so right. I I I love this movie. I ended up buying this movie because I rented it the first time I watched it for the podcast, and I re- I've actually rented it another time. Wait, you you saw it for the first years. time in the when you first watched the podcast? Yeah. Uh, damn. Like a, like two years ago, yeah. <laughs> and so I rented it then, and then I rented it another time because I wanted to watch it. So this time around, I'm like, I've rented it twice. I'm just gonna buy it. And I, I I really like this movie. It's fucking weird. It's so but it's weird. It's paced incredibly well. <laughs> you know, I, like, I really rips. hate Jeff Goldblum, but he is amazing in this role. Oh, you yeah. hate Jeff Goldblum? I hate, what the I fuck hate is him wrong with you? He's the Jeff same Goldblum. fucking character in every goddamn movie. Yeah, and he's amazing at yeah, it. Yeah, he's really in good this at this one. It. He's really good at being Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but not yeah and he's great at being Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> yeah. he's so, the thing is, it's not just that he's great I don't want to keep seeing life. Jeff Goldblum. If you ever see him in like, <laughs> it's, interviews, it's not, he's delightful. It's not It's Jeff Goldblum in Thor. It's Jeff Goldblum <laughs> as a fly. It's just not what I want. Double D, you talk about how much you love Stallone and how much, oh, you yeah. know, Bruce Willis plays the same character in everything. Stallone plays the same character in everything. Seth Rogen plays, like, a lot of actors do the same thing over and over again. So why can't Jeff Goldblum uh, do it? There's yeah, something the, about Jeff Goldblum that I think you're an anti-Semite. 
Uh, I, <laughs> oh, the, the truth comes it's out. The truth comes out. All right. All right, go at him hard now. Everyone, go at him hard. <laughs> You're not yeah, denying it. I, I did deny it. <laughs> go put your MAGA hat on, you bitch. Oh, man, let me go buy one. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. Um, Realizations. Uh, the, one, the one thing I like to, <laughs> so I like to reconcile this, I like to reconcile uh, uh, Jeff Goldblum playing every character, mm-hmm. is that I just think it's Jeff Goldblum in alternate realities. Where he's, <laughs> yeah, it's just it Jeff is. Goldblum. You know what I mean? Like, it's... It's like qua- what? What if Quantum Leap was Jeff Goldblum? And it's just like... right. That's exactly what this is. Oh, I just hate Jeff Goldblum in every. Well, you're an role, idiot. Except this D. one. I'm, I'm saying I'm trying to give him a compliment for this role, but every other role I hate him in. What about in Jurassic, Jurassic Park? Park? Is fucking the worst. What he's shirtless. Jurassic Park. He's, Jurassic Park he's exactly like the character. I in know. The book. It's terrible. No, he's like, like that's what the character in the book is in like. Jurassic Park. I know. I read the book, but like it's it's clearly, you didn't read it well. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd still hate Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> You're an idiot, and I don't respect you anymore. Oh, did you ever? I had like one percent the respect <laughs> that I would have for just like. No, well, I guess I guess, I guess that's not that big of a loss though. No. <laughs> yeah. Like, like if you would like, 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 like if I was at a hundred and like I lost like fifty percent. Like how much? Would it, how much would it be? At, how how much would it be at a hundred percent? I just want to know how much how bad Jeff Goldblum. Like being hated is for you. Oh, it's pretty high up there because I love Jeff Goldblum. I actually just listened to a podcast that he was a guest star on, uh, like Conan O'Brien's podcast, and he was delightful. Yeah, I'm not saying he's a terrible person. I'm just saying him acting is the same. Double D, I actually started to gain respect for you after you hosted the the Dread episode. (laughs) And all the goodwill you got from me for like hosting a great episode is gone. Good. I'm glad. Fucking bitch. Uh, uh, all right. Talking about Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> it's about wait, Jeff Goldblum. Wait, 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 <laughs> let's 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 let's. Uh... Well, no, you didn't answer the question. How much percent? <laughs> you can't say it. <laughs> How much percent? Seventy-four uh, percent. I I actually was gonna get seventy-five. <laughs> yeah, well, hey. you were wrong. If this was Price of Rights rules, you would have lost because you went so, over. So well, about this you movie, lost, you lost one hundred percent. All right, um, Jeff Goldblum was great in this movie. The, so, dude. He's ripped in this movie. He, he is super good. <laughs> he did those weird gymnastics. Yeah, dude. Did he um, actually do those gymnastics or was it someone was ba- else? When he was raw dogging that I think the flips pick? were someone else, but I think him like doing just the stretching <laughs> and stuff was him. Yeah, I think that was him. Do you think it was him plowing the, the girl from the bar raw? Yeah, totally. That was gross. Yeah, that was gross. <laughs> <laughs> He just yeah. raw dogged some strange woman. I like how she's bar. like, what am I, a whore? And <laughs> he, he just drink, goes he with just drinks. <laughs> yeah, she like doesn't like deny it. She's like, okay, I, I guess I live with my mother. It's not with me. Oh, man, you will snap worse. her guy's arm in two. I'm going I with you. I know this is way late into the movie, but we're talking about it now. So like, the basic part of this movie, obviously we'll go into the movie, but there's a point where like he's trying to get Gina Davis to go through the trans you know the teleporter and she won't do it so he's like i'll go find somebody else so he decides to go to a bar and he like hits on this like random chick like breaks her boyfriend's arm and then takes her back to his place and bangs her and is trying to get her to go through the teleporter and there's a point where she's like do you want an alcohol rub and wants to rub like alcohol on his back he's like no it burns he like throws it (laughs) who the fuck rubs alcohol on people I've heard of oil massage. What the hell is an alcohol massage? Well, she saw that he was greasy and oily, so she was trying to help him <laughs> you exfoliate. I guess you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't like it. Well, well um, was this was this one taking place? Where would where, where was this movie taking place at? It wasn't Canada yet. I, I think this is like <laughs> Los Angeles or something. I don't think it ever uh, says. Yeah. I don't think it explicitly yeah. says, but uh, well, maybe maybe weird. that's what they do in Canada: alcohol rubs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I've never been. Um. So neither have the I. Main difference of this movie is that it actually doesn't start out as a mystery. It, it it goes it cuts to the chase where it's like you know it's it's fucking well not to the chase he's he's very coy about it but it's about teleportation and he's trying no, to bang. He, it cuts right to the chase. Like I don't really understand. It. The motivation of Seth Brundle initially, because the movie opens up at like this party for people in like science. Well, he so kind of like explains it because he's like, "Oh, I've been isolated by myself all along, so I just want to talk to someone about it." Right, but like 
this woman gina davis is a reporter and he's like trying to like let me show you something cool i'm going to change the world and she's like everybody says that and he goes well everybody's lying i'm not like come see me and she's like i have three more interviews i have to do <laughs> and then she goes to his house and like they you know he teleports her stockings or whatever Oh, he, was, he, then, he brings her to the house, starts playing piano. He's totally trying to fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. Like, he's he's legit smash. doing this, like, to try and get her to fuck him because I guess this right. is... Right. No, absolutely. But then, like, he finds out that after he does the experiment, she's like, holy shit, I'm going to write an article about this. He's like, wait, what? She's like, I'm a journalist. And he goes, you never told me that. And it's like, she absolutely did. It's like the first thing she said. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, so he like, wasn't listening. Freaking <laughs> uh, obviously, out. he was just, you know, was paying attention to something else. Mike. Right. <laughs> yeah, he was just trying to wait for her to finish talking so he could say the next thing he wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how much. <laughs> well, and this whole thing, and then so she immediately goes to her boss named Stathis Barans, like, like a Game of Thrones character. Stathis. It really is. <laughs> Stathis Barathe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, who that guy was also a fucking He's huge a creep. creep. That, that was like I don't understand this. This is the they're biggest, all creeps. Like, Everyone's a creep. <laughs> Gina Davis isn't a creep, I don't think. Oh, she's she's, a, a, she's the creepiest one. She's the creepiest one. <laughs> she's the creepiest one. <laughs> yeah, dude, she was well, like she keeps going back to see the fly. She had a baby with the fly. Oh god. So the thing that drives me crazy about this movie, the only thing that I I don't like about this movie is. This character, Stathis, Stath, yeah, Stathis Bar- Baratheon, <laughs> Stathis Bar- Stathis Baratheon. <laughs> this guy is like the editor of the magazine she works at, and apparently was like her professor in like journal school, journalism school, yeah. and like she fucked him like when she was a, in journalism school. And like throughout this movie, he like just shows up. Like she goes home, he's like taking and a he's shower in her shower, <laughs> and he's like. Oh, hey, I have your key. It's totally fine. And she's like, get the fuck out. She's like, give me and my then, key back. And he's like, uh, I think I'll keep it. <laughs> yeah. And then she fuck. lets him and doesn't change the lock. So then later on, she goes and fucks Seth Brundle. Brundle and then the next day she shows up to work. Or no, she doesn't even show up to work. She's shopping. And this guy follows her into like the mall and then follows her into a store. And he's like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm onto something big. What? His cock? And she's like, what the fuck are you talking nice. about? And she's like, back the fuck off. And then later on in the movie, she he's like blackmailing her. Like he like leaves a uh, a fake magazine cover at his door and it has like a drawn picture of Seth. And so she goes to confront him. Like, what do you want? He's like, dude, just have sex with me. It doesn't have to be a relationship. Let's just have stress relieving sex. And she's like, you're disgusting. And everything, so it's like, like, this guy's like a monster. He's a terrible person throughout the entire movie, right? Can we all agree? Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it had to be reconciled at the end, like, where he was, like, I don't know who the hero was in this movie. (laughs) That's my point. (laughs) There was no hero. When Seth is freaking, like, goes, like, pure monster, and we'll get into it, I'm sure, he, and she finds out she's pregnant, she goes to him, and he, like, goes to help her get an abortion, and then he shows up to rescue her. And like, kind of rescues her to an extent, but it's like, I don't, I don't understand also, like why he would help and everything, and why would she go to him? Because honestly, and I said this the last time we talked about this podcast or this movie on the podcast was, if you go to him and he loses a hand and a foot, saving you, because he had like acid spit on his foot yeah, and his hand, those aren't coming. He's back, gonna right? expect some like crazy sex for the rest of his life, and I'm not saying he deserves it. Like she shouldn't owe him anything, but he's gonna expect that off of, based off what he was already doing. Yeah, well, uh, that doesn't mean he's gonna get it. So. <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, he should, still has the one is, hand, so he, he he's good. Yeah, I don't know. The other, the other, the other, well, the other thing about it, the prosthetic, it's always the stranger, right? Well, I mean, the other thing about it too. The other thing about it too is that, like, I, I'm sure both these people. Are gonna go fucking insane just the way this shit ended oh, dude. like <laughs> it ends so dark it's just she fucking shoots him and it's like credits and she's crying <laughs> yeah it goes right into credits like she's well, just horrified she doesn't just shoot him like she's like i can't do it and then as a monster so he he 
reverted to um, a giant fly with the telepod. Fly form. That's so sick. Then he oh, God. To the telepod, and then he lifts the barrel to his own head, and then like she's like, "I can't do it," and then she just does it. See, that's what I don't understand either, because he didn't really get spliced with the telepod. Like, if you cut off one of the telepod, wouldn't just just transport him to the other telepod? Well, I didn't understand at the very end of the movie, and we're kind of skipping right to the end, but he 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 becomes like you know kind of like a zombie looking thing and then he becomes like just like a blob like an amorphous just well clearly like the flesh is like there's something underneath the well how i tell you is like there's something underneath the flesh and it's like melting off and you see like this right right absolutely which is so So sick (laughs) becomes like basically like looks like a weird giant fly thing right and his whole plan is he he also created artificial intelligence, which they just, they just completely gloss over in this film, because he has a computer that yep. controls the thing, and he can type questions to the computer that says, "Hey, what happened?" And the computer <laughs> will tell him, he goes, "How do we fix this?" And the computer will be like, "Oh, do another teleportation with at least two or more humans." Hey, hey, Siri, so no, no, he how do we become how human again? It. No, all he asked was how to minimize the how to minimize the fly. the fly thing. Couldn't he yes. have just asked it how to separate the two? Because oh, I, I knew well, both compositions. I think at, well, at right. this point, well, it, it's just too much. Too, it's already done. You know, he, he's right. he's Brundle. No, I get that. But <laughs> basically, the the end of the movie is the machine told him if he teleports with another human being, he can re- like reduce the fly component because it'll be two humans to one fly. Which honestly, the fly is so small, you would think it would already be more human than fly. But whatever, I'll 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 take it's, the conceit of the well, movie. Well, one one, one thing about it. that that machine, that AI, you know what its name was? Skynet. Computer. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, it doesn't make it sense. It saw to this. It was like, you know what? He, Let's fuck it. The machines need a role. Dude, this is <laughs> right. the beginning. This is only the beginning. The thing that, to me, that doesn't make sense is. So he uses his, like, prototype, and then the two ones that we've been seeing throughout the movie, and he puts Gina Davis in one, him in another, and what's supposed to happen is the two combine into one, right? Yeah. So Stannis Baratheon <laughs> shoots, like, one of the cables, but he sh- appears to... Did he shoot the cable he that shot, Gina Davis Yeah, he was shot in? the one that Gina Davis was near. Got it. Okay. that's That was my question, because I didn't see which pot. I'm like, why did it not work? Okay, that makes more sense. He shot the one near Gina and Davis, then, and then he, like, put his stumpy fingers over the lock thing and... <laughs> <laughs> right. I oh mean, what what did you guys think about the differences between the the first fly and this fly's teleportation sequences? Uh, they're pretty similar. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, the first well, one. Well, like, no, the first one had a bunch of neon. <laughs> neon lights everywhere, and like, <laughs> is that supposed to be like plasma or something? They're just lights. It's like, just <laughs> lights. <laughs> it's just lights. <laughs> It's so oh, he knows that it's working. <laughs> and they had to wear VR goggles to protect their eyes every time. <laughs> Yet when you put yourself in Oculus, there, you don't. So. <laughs> but, so the thing that I thought was, was funny, and I like there was actually a few things I didn't bring bring up in the first movie, but one of the parallels that was pretty cool is at the beginning of this movie, after she like bangs him for the first time, she's like, wait, are you wearing the same clothes as like, the last three times I saw you, and it turns out he's like Albert Einstein and wears the same clothes over and over and over again. Yeah. The first movie, the original scientist did the same thing. The only time you see him in different clothing is the night where they go to the ballet. And then other than that, he wears the same outfit the entire movie. Well, I mean, he's a fly. He's not going to change. Like, how is he going to fit but things I mean, over like, his shirt? Private. His fly head. <laughs> <laughs> but then also, in this movie, what was interesting, that I thought was interesting, and I didn't notice it the last time I watched it, was... You know, Seth makes a big deal about how he doesn't want to have to think about what he wears, and he wears the same clothing every day. But once he starts banging Gina Davis, she starts buying him clothes, and he's wearing something different like every time we see him, until he's like super mutated, and then he's just wearing a white. <laughs> then t-shirt. he's just fucking well, naked in a blob. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, how it, she just rips his jaw off. Yeah, it was, Ugh. and it was, it was weird, you know, compared one to the other. How you know, with this one. The 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 transformation or the initial um, fly, uh, um, you know, the the fusion happens thirty six minutes in. You know, would... right? It, no, so that that's the whole point of this one is it's more mutation and body horror. Like well, the other thing that I think is really interesting about this, and it's so I think this makes it a much better movie. Is it, he 
thinks that he is stronger. He goes, oh, by getting disintegrated and then reintegrated. I become pure. It gets rid of all the toxins and impurities, so I'm now stronger and faster than I've ever been. It's like being a completely pure, healthy human. And then as he starts to realize that he has the fly components, his mind starts going into madness. So he says something like, he says something crazy like, you should be the next person to go through and you'll be part of the dynamic duo and we'll go through the primordial ooze. And then he starts talking about well, how no, his that, mind actually, is part that, of a fly that was b- politician. Before, after, afterwards, she notices the fly because like he's like, he says you should be the dynamic duo because he's like he believes he's like a superhuman being and he's trying to convince her to go through. Right. But it's his mind is already slipping yeah. and he's thinking that he's better than he is. And then as he starts to slip further into like flyhood, there's a point where he's like, have you ever heard of a fly politician? No, because they're brutal and everything. I might be the first fly politician. Like he's trying to justify his being like he's somewhere between fly and human. But then he's also like has this weird thing how he's fascinated with his his transformation. Like there's a point where he's like eating donuts and he's like, let's make a video for the kids. <laughs> I can't okay. eat solid food. It hurts me. So I have to like puke on my like, food. Like, well, when he yeah, first sees Gina Davis, it. he's like, well, he pulls out a donut. He's like, Bleh! and she's like, oh my God. He's like, oh, this is, this is gross, isn't it? Well, and then he, starts to he, think he was better, really charming, so gets... like in, in Jeff Goldblum fashion. As a fly. Yeah. He was a very charming fly. I think one of my favorite parts of the movie is when she goes to see him, like, so she doesn't see him for some time after he, he, you know, he brings that bar chick home. So she doesn't see him for a little bit. And so she finally goes and visits him and he's like walking on two canes. He's like, looks like he's going to fall over and die. And then he comes, she comes back like a few days later and he's like walking on the wall and he's like, look, I'm getting pretty good at this. And then he like lifts his shirt. He's like, what is that? I don't know. It's pretty gross though. <laughs> But the, kind of well, so like, like so the difference is that like he thought he had a disease that was contagious and that he broke down because like his ear fell off and he was like all sad he was like oh, was so good. <laughs> ripping his fingernails off yeah and then, and then when teeth. when we ca- catch back up to him he's like understanding like okay I'm transforming to a motherfucking fly this shit's crazy look what I can do and he's all climbing on the ceiling so he knows he does he's not dying but of a disease but then he gets kind of into it yeah exactly because he's like this is something new. <laughs> The last bit of humanity he has is there's one night when she's she goes to visit him one more time and she's going to tell him she's pregnant and getting an abortion because she does, she's afraid that it'll be like a fly baby. A larva. He he's like, get away from me. Like, I will hurt you. Like, don't come back. And then she hears him talking to or she hears her. Uh, he hears her talking to Stannis Baratheon. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much easier just to say that now. Saying, I'm going to get an abortion. So he's like, wait, that's my child. And like breaks into the hospital and kidnaps her. And then like the whole showdown goes down. He just down. breaks in like the Kool-Aid man, by the way. How did he jump up there? He doesn't have wings. <laughs> yeah. I don't he's, know. He's, he's the fly. He's got he's, jumpy he's, powers. Yeah, he's got, he's got fly. We need to talk he's about the fly baboons. For <laughs> fly oh, yeah. Is, yeah. Oh, God. The baboon. Yeah. I, I thought, oh. I mean, one, who's his baboon guy? <laughs> well, yeah. why, why a baboon? Why do they love him so much? <laughs> Well, the yeah, thing that's he, crazy is he kills the one baboon. Like, it's turned inside, inside out, out, right? Oh, God. And he's like, while they're having sex, she says something about liking his flesh. Or, like, she likes the, chewing on him like a woman, that. like a grandmother likes to chew on a baby's cheeks because they love the flesh. And he's like, oh, I never taught the AI how to handle flesh kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, but he it, goes to the other baboon. He's like, I'm sorry for killing your brother. Yeah. He's like, well, I, and he, it's like, once again, why are you experimenting on baboons, which are... As Joe pointed out, where do you even get a baboon? Yeah, aren't they like vicious animals that like rip your face off? Yeah. And he was just like, why would he not use mice? He was like cuddling on this like yeah, this baboon. Fucking and, baboon. Like, oh, he's just, naked. Like, on him and, yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Apes, like chimpanzees, baboons, all those like great apes. If they get mad at you, the first thing they do is they go for your genitals. They go for your genitals, your face, and your groin. And he lets this baboon like snuggle him while he's naked. <laughs> Hey, no shame. That's a uh, bad idea. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess it, to further our point, both these guys are fucking crazy. Mad scientists. <laughs> fucking insane. Well, so you guys want to hear something crazy? So there's a deleted scene that they, they, they never put on like DVD or anything like that that was in the original cut of the movie, and people hated it, where he's trying to like experiment a little bit more about with fusion, so he actually merges a cat in the second baboon. <laughs> And then, like, gets disgusted by it, and he realizes he's losing his humanity for the, you know, just based off him doing that experiment. So he beats this 
cat baboon to death with like a lead pipe. Jesus Christ. And then like audiences and test screens are like, well, once he did that, like there's, we have no faith in his ability to come back or have humanity. So they cut that scene. Uh, but I mean, I, I, I would have liked it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds like that would have been like a really cool scene. I like how that was the moment. It wasn't when he was like putting Gina Davis in the telepod. You know, they, they still had hope. <laughs> right. Or bringing that other one. I do like the line when she like shows up randomly when that girl's still at his house and she's like he's trying to get her to go into the pod and she's like, No, I'm afraid. He's like, Don't be afraid and Jenny Davis is like, No. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Like the way she says it's rad. <laughs> or I really wish she had thing... that baby. Yeah, oh god. The other line I thought was great. Like this movie's full of great one liners. So like that that girl he picks up from the bar, her name's Tani, and she says something along the lines, after she watches this guy break her boyfriend's arm, she decides to go out with him, and she goes, are you a bodybuilder or something? He goes, yes, I build bodies. I take them apart and put them back together again. And it's like, that's a weird thing to say. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's not saying He's not lying. He's a sociopath. They're all sociopaths. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think we got to the core of that movie. It's it's crazy. I Yeah. I I don't know. I just I just want to reiterate. I like I I I love this movie. This movie is so great. It's a body. Oh, I love this yeah. movie. <laughs> I, I no bought fly. it. I'm gonna watch it again someday. <laughs> oh, uh, one highlight I did want to bring up. Um, I forgot to talk about in in the beginning. They there was no cat yow. <laughs> 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 they missed out on that. So you you didn't know right away that it was gonna be a good horror movie because yeah, it was missing. Yeah, the cat I, I didn't know what I was in for. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> All right, so I guess uh, we're gonna start wrapping things up. Um, how how do we normally do this, Mike? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll wrap it up for you, Alex. You did a great job. I, I'll 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 bring it in. Okay, <laughs> I, I beg to differ. All right, so first off, <laughs> Joe, thank you for uh, coming on and being a great guest. You were hilarious. I uh, yeah, no problem, man. I really appreciate it. I appreciate I appreciate you guys. Double D, Alex, thank you guys for hosting these two episodes. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and uh, thank you for everyone for listening to Remake Rewind the last two years. We're going into a third year. Uh, we've got some big episodes coming up um, with uh, a lot of remakes are coming into theater. So Pet Cemetery is coming out pretty soon. We've got Shazam going into theater, so we might do Superman. Uh, we've got Dumbo going into theater. So we've got some big movies coming up. So, you know, we look forward to covering those. Uh, please check out all of our social media there. We've got one link that has, you know, all of our platforms. So it's really easy to find our content. Now check us out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube at MDX pods. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Check out our other podcast ruin my childhood. And if you want to support the show, you can do that two ways. You can obviously like, and share our content, leave a review on iTunes, Apple podcasts, Stitcher, you can also support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash mdxpods if you want to you know, support the show monetarily. Or if you want something free, also go to audibletrial.com slash mdxpods if you want to get a free audiobook, free month of Audible. And it gives us a little bit of a kickback. So help support the show. But first off, just thank you guys for listening and uh, just continue to listen. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thank Bye. you. All right.